Good afternoon. It's, it's nice that the, the chamber invited me to come speak again this year, have me back. Uh, the introduction this year was, was very nice. Uh, I appreciate that, given the last two years' introductions from Gary and, and Corby. Uh, <laughs> this, this, this year's was very straightforward and, 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 at, and to the point. So, so. Uh, and Gary and Corby, thanks for coming. <laughs> the, uh, uh, no, actually, with, with Cynthia and Gary and, and, and Corby, the last few years, the Chamber's had tremendous leadership from, from our citizens, and thank you very much for serving. Uh, the state of the town is actually financial condition. We have very good reserves at our, at our general fund as well as our sewer fund. Uh, the, our, our fiscal health is wonderful and overall the, the town is very good. Uh, that's a general statement. But before I get to a lot more details, there's a few folks I do want to introduce. The first one is my wife, Jaina. Uh, my wife puts up with a lot. Uh, I am an attorney and that, I, that is a full-time job on top of, of, of this uh, job as, as town council president. And uh, I, she, Joe says we have five kids. I tell her she has six, because if you count me, I, I am definitely the biggest kid that we, that we have in our family, and she puts up with a lot. So thank you very much, dear. Uh, other town council member tonight or, or here this evening: Eileen Pritchard, uh, Dan Hankey, Charlie White, Art Levine. Uh, two could not be here. Uh, David George and Stuart Easley, they both had business engagements that, that required them to be away today, but they would like to be here. They send their condolences. This past year, we lost a town council member who had been on the council for 11 years. That's Tim Lima. He, he relocated, got a, a wonderful job opportunity, moved to Florida. So we, we lost something, but we gained something at the same time. And, and Art was, was Tim's replacement. So uh, uh, we're sad to see Art, uh, sad to see Tim Lee. <laughs> Sorry, Art. Uh, that arts here as well. The uh, some department heads that, and, and these are the folks that really keep the town going on a day in day out basis. Gary Huff. Gary's been our town manager now for a little, just about two years, and has come in and done a fantastic job uh, of leading the, the, the town's day to day operations. George Kale, our police chief back there. Brian Lott, our fire chief. There he is. Wes Booker, director of development. Thane Morgan, IT director. Jeff Hiking, our en engineer and public works director. Gary Pruitt, our parks and recreation director. Rick Farnham, our wastewater treatment plant director. And the person who's not a director, but who's helped put a lot of the information together so I can convey it to you today is Mark Stasek, the town communication coordinator. Thank you very much, Mark, for helping put, put this together today. Uh, a couple of the special guests that are here, Dr. Ramondi, our, our wonderful superintendent from HSC Schools is here, Bob Keck, the president of the school board, Jeff Sturgis, another school board member, and Pam Zager, our, our, our Falkery Township assessor, I saw her. So thank you all for coming as well. There's another elected official that I didn't introduce, but I'm going to come to them in a minute. The, uh, a couple of things that have been going around the state, if you read the, the editorial pages, uh, watch the news, there's been discussion about a property tax crisis uh, around the state, that there is a tremendous need for reform of property taxes uh, around the state, and that you've, depending on what newspaper you read, what news report you hear, and that property taxes at all levels are going to be going up from 15 to 20 percent. Uh, this coming year, uh, that a lot of communities saw 15 to 20 percent increases this past year, uh, that there is, a, there is supposed to be a, a crisis for property tax reform in, in the state of Indiana. Um, so I want to talk first about property taxes, the town's property tax rate. The, this is a, a 10 year look. A one-year look, two-year two -year look really doesn't do it justice. The way that Indiana did property taxes changed a little bit in terms of wording, and so there was an adjustment from 2000, 1997 to 2002, but that, that adjustment is, is shown on this chart. And so over the last three years, the town's property tax rate has been flat. There's no 15% increase 
this year. There's not been in the past, and, and, and there's no big tax increase foreseeable in the future. Uh, that's the 10 years tax perspective from, from the town uh, a fisher's perspective. Wrong way. So how does Fishers compare to some of our neighboring communities in Hamilton County? Hopefully you can see this. Yeah, we have by far the lowest tax rate in, in, in Hamilton County. Uh, Nobles is 122 percent higher. Carmel's is, is 47 percent higher than Fishers. And so you, you get the point real quick. Uh, I think we're doing a pretty good job. Wrong way again. How are we doing comparing to the, to the other large communities around the, around this, the state? So what we did is we, we I picked out the, the 11 largest communities in the state of Indiana. Fishers is the ninth largest, in, in case you're wondering, in terms of population. And so we look at these other large communities. Some of them are very similar population that we have. But if you look at their property tax rates, uh, almost all of them are three or four times higher than the town of Fishers tax rate. So maybe some other communities are having property tax problems and, and a need for reform, but that need for reform is not, uh, is not present in Fishers. Uh, a little broader analysis. There's 585 cities and towns in the state of Indiana. Uh, 438 have property tax rates higher than the town of Fishers. Okay? Of those 146 communities with, lo with, with lower tax rates, those communities have an average population of 712 people. So if you look at the, at the services, those communities, the 700 people are delivering to, those, to their residents, and compare them to what the town of Fishers is delivering in terms of public service, police and, police and fire, roads, parks, wastewater treatment. Uh, I challenge you to go compare those services to those, to those folks who have lower tax rates and see if, our, if, if that increase in property taxes is worth it. I think that by just living in the community and, and driving around, you see very quickly that it's definitely well, well, well worth the tax rate that we're at. Some improvements that we've, that we've got accomplished this past year and on the road side, uh, we got 131st and Cumberland Road. That was a, a major, uh, it was a bottle jam. I mean, it, it, it was a bottleneck, it was a problem, and we got it fixed right before the winter set in, and, it, we, and it, we're going to finish it up this year, but the road improvements are done, so that was a, a significant improvement. 136th and, and Promise Road. Again, it was a bottleneck and we got it fixed. 136 in Maryland, another good improvement. On the, on the forefront of road improvements that are on the way, there has been some discussion here recently about 126th Street. And yes, it's needed, it has to be expanded in order to meet the, the, the service levels that's expected. The road is getting, uh, for the number of cars that are traveling on it, the road is at its capacity, it's actually exceeding capacity. It needs to be expanded. So what you've seen in the newspaper and what you see at Town Hall on, on, the, on, the, on the board in terms of design, that's a preliminary draft, okay? Now this is going to be a federally funded project where we have roughly eight million dollars already allocated for this project through very, various federal sources. Uh, it's a 25 million dollar project and so we have to comply with federal rules and regulations. Uh, the town council has not approved the plan that has, has been presented at a public hearing. That's just the engineer's, engineer's best wish. If they could design it the way they want it, that's the way they would design it. But as a town council, we have the, author we have the ability and authority to make some minor modifications that comply with federal law and regulations to address specific concerns of neighbors who might live along 126th Street. So is the final design done? No. Is it going to look like this to a substantial extent? Probably. It is going to be four lanes with a median and with a, with a trail and a sidewalk. Is the median going to be the entire length of the road? I don't know. That's, that's something that's going to be discussed. Is it going to be, uh, is everything going to be exactly like that, the entire length? Maybe, maybe not. But again, that's the, that's the dialogue that we started about a month or so ago, and that's the dialogue that we're going to continue having over the next couple months to finalize the design. Some other road improvements that, that's on the plate for this coming year, the 100, uh, 126th Street, once we get the design done, we'll start with uh, right-of-way acquisition, which means buying the, the ground necessary to, to build the road, as well as uh, reloc relocating all the utilities, the power lines, the telephone lines, the cable lines. Those all have to be moved before we can even start construction. And that takes almost a full year just to get that done. Uh, 126th and Lannan Road over by the YMCA, uh, that's going to be uh, reconstructed, and that's, that's planned for a roundabout. 
141st and Cumberland uh, intersection, again, and 121st Street. Those are going to be improved as well. And we're going to continue working with the state of Indiana to try to accelerate the I-69 I and I-465 improvements. Uh, Commissioner Sharp came to, came to this body about four or five months ago. Uh, we met with Commissioner Sharp twice over the last year. We've met with a new commissioner. Uh, we have, every time we've met with them, we've urged that they, that they accelerate the improvements that they have planned. And we're going to continue that effort and, and continue meeting with them to get, get that job done as well. On the park front, uh, we have a lot of parks that are being planned this year. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is Cynthia Ann Park. It's, 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 this is a, a turf park for, for those in the, in the park industry. It's going to be these fields at the bottom, the five fields. Uh, they can be football. They can be soccer. They can be lacrosse. They can be rugby. They're multi-purpose. Uh, there will be a, a restroom and a concession stand there uh, to begin with. And this is just phase one of, of the Cynthia Ann Park. It's roughly 50 acres out of about 126 in Th Cynthia Ann Road. And so uh, we, have, we have capacity issues at our, at our parks, and we're going to meet those capacity issues starting this year with, with this expansion at, at Cynthia Ann Road. This is a brand new park that's coming on, online. Billerica Park phase two. Uh, what you see in green is, is what's built in terms of the, of the seven ball diamonds. Uh, we're trying hard to build the eighth one this year, plus build a new community building, plus build the splash pad. Uh, the design is done. It's going out to bid next month. We'll hopefully be opening the bids and accepting the bids in April. Construction will start this summer and be, com be completed by July or August. So uh, that's phase two of Billericay Park. Olio Fields. If you've ever been to Billericay Park, it's a beautiful facility. Uh, but we also decided that uh, our girls needed a similar facility that they could call home as well, that they could be just as proud of uh, as Bill and Ricky. And so with cooperation from the school corporation, the town acquired the softball fields behind Hamilton Southeastern High School. And we are in the process of improving those fields for the girls' softball. Uh, we're installing lights on all fields. Uh, we're installing accession stand and restrooms. Uh, we're installing uh, uh, the uh, dugouts. It's going to be, we're spending over a million dollars in improvements at, at Oleo Fields. Hamilton Proper Park at roughly 116th and, and Hoosier Road. Uh, this came in for a rezone uh, for the Lifestyle Center, which you see in the upper left-hand corner. And the developers agreed to donate roughly 17 acres behind this facility as more soccer fields. And as you see in the lower corner, that's the, that's the conceptual design of, of that park. It's a pretty unique facility. You're going to have restaurants, coffee shops, other types of amenities right next to the, to the park where you can literally go get something to eat or drink and then come sit on the hillside and watch your, your children, your grandchildren, or, or just want to watch kids play soccer for a little while. It's going to be a very beautiful facility, and that park's being built for us without any tax dollars, and it's being given to us as well, without any tax dollars. Job growth. We're going to talk about Money Magazine a little bit more in a little bit, but one of the things that they emphasized this past year was, was job growth. And if you look on the list of, of, of Money Magazine, Fishers was the 15th fastest in terms of job growth in the nation. And I want to talk a little bit about why and what's coming. Exit 10, and I appreciate the folks from, from St. Vincent for being here today because I mean, Exit 10 is going to be a, a medical technology park, in essence, for the town of Fishers on the south side. Uh, what you see here, that's the vision that the town council has, has told the developers at St. Vincent's, Clarion, Community Hospital. That's the vision that we have for Exit 10. Now, these are not the buildings that are going to be constructed, but these are the types of buildings that we hope we can convince the developers that we would like to see. And what are we going to see? We've heard about the St. Vincent facility, and that's the, the one on the, on the top right. There's another medical office building almost that's 85,000 square feet that's going to be almost next to them. Clarion Medical Complex, they, they purchased 95 acres uh, at exit 10. 95 acres, think about that. Methodist Hospital downtown is not even half of that. Okay, Community Hospital already has seven acres and they have room to expand. And then Saxony, which is the development there, and there's going to be a lot of office and retail that's going to come starting this year as well. So 
we have a lot on our plate in terms of job growth. And, and these, are the, these are not just jobs. These are jobs that are high paying, high skilled, the type of jobs that you want in your community, the type of jobs that attract people that you want to live in the community, and provide a tax base that, that provides for the services that we all enjoy, whether it's the town, the schools, everything. Saxony, these, these are the types of buildings that, that are going to be non-medical at Saxony with the, with the retail and the, and the commercial buildings. The first retail and a little bit commercial building that's going up at Saxony is the Bond Building um, it, that's going to be started this year, and this is the rendering of that building. Fisher's Marketplace, if you saw in the news last night, it went through plan commission last night. Uh, it's going to be the Indiana's largest indoor water park with a conference center a very big conference center attached to it, as well as a very nice hotel. And then on top of that, there's going to be a mixed use, of a total of 900,000 square foot at, 100, at 131st and, and uh, State Road 37. Uh, we are in the process of working with the state, trying to convince them to give us another a cut off of, off of 37 and help time the lights on 37 to help traffic flow better uh, overall and make this, make this project very viable and very successful. And this is something that's literally brand new. Uh, I just learned about it uh, in, its, in its almost final form Monday night. It's the Fisher's Research and Technology Center. Don Kincaid and his partners have put together, uh, are putting together this technology center uh, at, at Delaware Park, which is roughly 106 and, and, and uh, 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 Lantern Road. And this is our life, the beginning of our life sciences initiative. Indiana, the Indianapolis metropolitan area was ranked as the ninth uh, 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 largest bioscience uh, employment center in the country, and that's ahead of San Diego, Washington, D.C., Houston, St. Louis, a lot of big cities that are bigger than the metropolitan area. In the Indianapolis area has a lot of these bioscience jobs. And with all the universities around the state, IU, Purdue, and the other major Ball State and the other major universities uh, are in our vicinity, this is a natural spot for it. And so with Don's help and the town's support as well, uh, we're going to be start seeing a 50,000 square foot building uh, designed to house 25 tenants with 25% with of the building for wet lab space that will in the first phase create between 200 to 300 jobs with an average salary between forty dollars and $100,000 with groundbreaking this spring and completion in the fall. And that's wonderful news. And another thing that you may not have heard a whole lot about, but you may have heard something about. We think it's time to start looking at redeveloping the town center. Uh, and, we, and we asked the Chamber of Commerce to literally lead that effort because over the last couple of years there have been some high profile cases where they go to the U.S. Supreme Court and say, uh, we're not taking people's property just for redevelopment purposes, and we're not going to. Uh, but there is a way to, to uh, make it financially attractive enough for folks to actually willingly sell their property. And I think that with the, with the energy that the Chamber has created, and I want to say this, it's real energy with the meetings that they've had with the homeowners there and the property owners, that the redevelopment of the downtown, I think, has a real chance of coming to, to, to start this year and that we're in the process of interviewing finalists of people who actually have responded to a request for proposal to help get the downtown revitalized and redeveloped. Last year, we talked about the town being recognized by Monday Magazine as being the 24th best place to live. And in 2006, we were recognized again as being the 33rd best place to live. So we dropped nine, but out of about 50,000 communities, a, a, a drop of ranking of nine is probably not a, not a real bad thing. Uh, and last year we talked about that it's not numbers, because I can show you a lot of pretty pictures and a lot of pretty numbers and, and encouraging numbers that explain why we're ranked consistently and recognized consistently as being a good place to live. But again, last year we talked about people, and that's particularly true again this year. Another interesting point is that there were only 10 communities that repeated from 2005 to 2006. Fisher's is one of 10 in the country that actually were recognized in the top 100 of Money Magazine 
of best places to live. So, why are we one of the ten who repeated? And I think that last year we talked about volunteers because we have a tremendous number of volunteer organizations and volunteers who work tirelessly to make our community a great place to live. But we also have a tremendous number of public servants who don't get the recognition, who don't, uh, who work behind the scenes, who, who you, you pass them on the street and you don't know that, that person's actually doing a lot to help you day in, day out to make this place a, a great place to live. And we're going to, today we're going to recognize some folks who are public servants in the truest sense and, and thank them for their work. Just to give you an idea how many public servants we have who are working almost every day in the town of Fishers. And this is the breakdown by department in the town of its, of its employees. I mean, we have a total of 359 full-time employees in the town of Fishers. Hamill Southeastern Schools, I mean, if, it, they have a lot more, I mean, because there's a lot of kids to educate. And it, but this is a breakdown by, of, of all the different job classifications within the school corporation that it takes to run the school corporation. And there's, over, there's almost 2,200 people working almost every single day of the year to make Fishers a great place to live who are public servants. And we're going to introduce a few of those right now. Mary Armstrong. I don't know where any of these folks are sitting, so if you could stand up, there you go. Mary, she's in her 29th year of teaching with HSC. The last 19 has been the English department chair. She's been very involved in the school's theatrical productions uh, and having worked in 63 plays and musicals uh, during that time. And she's been the, and the director uh, of the music, musicals and, and thespians since 1988. Thank you very much, Mary. And, and before I get a little bit ahead of myself, uh, it's not like I know all these people. Uh, and these are wonderful people. I've never met some of these folks ever. Uh, I've asked principals to nominate folks from their schools, and their principals have forwarded their names uh, to recognize people that they think represent the entire school. We can't rep recognize all 2,200 people. These are just 33 people who are representative of all 2,200 who do a good job every day. But these are, these are the individuals, the, the principals, and or on the town side, the department heads have recognized that these are folks who are doing a tremendous amount of, of good work for our community. John Bratton. He's nicknamed Mr. Royal, and, he, and I'm glad he, he, he wore his blue <laughs> royal outfit today. He's coached both football and girls basketball. Had a tough uh, call at, at the regional last weekend, but they, the girls had a wonderful season again. And, and, and this, just to give you an example, this year John organized a, a fundraiser for, for Riley's Hospital. He's, a, he's at Falkirk Intermediate School, and he raised $16,000 $16, through his efforts. So again, thank you very much, John. Bonnie Brothers. There she is. She's back there. Uh, Bonnie acts as the eyes and ears of Fishers Elementary. She's also helped uh, host uh, parent and staff training sessions for the school corporation's new uh, Honeywell Instant Alert System. And she does a tremendous job at Fishers Elementary. Thank you very much, Bonnie. <laughs> Gary Farr. I know he's here. I saw him earlier. There he is. Gary is, is one of those few folks who is actually a lifelong Fishers resident. Now, him and Mike Boothard and George Kale are about the only three that I know that are in this room that are lifelong Fishers residents. Uh, all the rest of us are, are kind of here because we, they let us here. Uh, he worked tirelessly to get Riverside uh, Junior High and uh, Riverside School open, and it, it was a lot of work to get open. But I just want to read something that, that Gary sent back to us when we told him what we were doing. That time of day is my busiest, lunch for 1,050 of Fisher's Finest. I can't remember the last day I was absent when there was kids in the building. Nine or ten years, I think. It is a great honor, and I thank you, but my responsibility is to make sure our students have a safe and clean environment so that they have the best opportunity for a quality education. He actually was turning me down. <laughs> Because he wanted to stay and work and do his job. So, but...
the, the only way we got him here is that I had to call Dr. Mon and she had to cancel school today <laughs> just to get him here. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. <laughs> Ashley Fox. Now, this is these are one of the one of the teachers that I actually know because my one of my daughters had her in first grade. And I, this is a testimony as well. She is a wonderful teacher. Um, and I didn't know that she was even going to be nominated. And, and the principal did that. And I think that's a wonderful thing. She's also at the, the cheerleading coach at Fisher Junior High. And she's, this is her third year at Hamill Southeastern. And she is, I can attest to this, she is very energetic, very full of energy. And she is one of the great reasons why our, our school system is, is what it is. So thank you very much, Ashley. Kathy Fuqua. Kathy? Where's Kathy? There she is. She's back there. Uh, Kathy is the current Teacher of the Year at Harrison Parkway Elementary. Uh, she's helped write and, and receive grants to help our students, and she's active in the mentoring program for, for Hamill Southeastern for its young teachers. So, Kathy, thank you very much. <laughs> Reggie Graham. Uh, now, this is, this is another one of the people that he and I have never met, but my, my kids have, have told me about him because they actually attend uh, Geist Elementary School right now. And to, to the kids, it, it's not Reggie Graham or Mr. Graham, it's Mr. Reggie. <laughs> and they told me last night as I was going to my tears, I know Mr. I know, that's Mr. Reggie. And, and Mr. Reggie, he's a cafeteria monitor, he's a school bus driver, but, he, but he's actually a lot more than that. Uh, when, he's, when he's monitoring the kids at school, he puts on puppet shows, teaching them how to be safe, be courteous, accept responsibility, help avoid conflict resolution. He's the top person we want to be our cafeteria monitor. So thank you very much, Reggie. And I'm doing a horrible job keeping the screens up, so I apologize for, for those of you getting short time on the screen. Lori Hanlon. Where's Lori? I saw her here earlier. There she is. Uh, Lori, not only does she work for the school corporation, but about every committee that the school corporation's had on a, on a planning basis, she served on. Whether it's the parent teacher organizations at all levels of schools, Hamilton Southeastern High School's Public Law 21 Committee, the Hamilton Southeastern Foundation Board, the Redistricting Committee, and if you go to the football games or basketball games on a Friday or Saturday night, you're going to see her working at the concession stands. So thank you very much, Lori. <laughs> Connie Herman. Uh, she, again, one of these people who works behind the scenes every day. Uh, her, her work impacts the students and staff every single day. And she was a major effort, and she, she was one of the reasons why there was a, such a successful dedication at Fishers High School this past year with the opening of the, of the brand new Fishers High School. So thank you very much, Connie. <laughs> Brad Jackson. There he is. Uh, a 33-year teaching veteran. And I'm amazed he has that much hair. I, that, that just... <laughs> For 33 years, that's, uh, uh, that, that's, that's an amazing accomplishment. He, he's the past district and building level teacher of the year. And so uh, he's the fast faculty advisor of the National Junior High Honor Society. And so, Brad, thank you very much. <laughs> Tracy Mark. She's been teaching early childhood special needs children for, for several years. She helped create the, the play backpacks. And these are backpacks that children with special needs take home uh, every night to help encourage them with a variety of home activities to help them uh, continue their educational process. She also helped organize the parent, the parent nights out for, to, for children with special needs to help give them a break as well. So thank you very much. <laughs> Dan Moosbrugger. Dan, there he is. Last year, Dan volu voluntarily provided an after-school art program teaching drawing to several Richmond Club students. This eventually involved to a, a, a before-school program as well. He's a licensed art teacher, and he, and he 
Uh, it makes itself available for emotional dis dis disabilities classes whenever it's possible. So thank you very much, Dan. <laughs> Kathy Posick. Where's Kathy? There she is. Uh, Kathy's been essentially taken over the kindergarten roundup uh, at Atlanta Road Elementary. And again, she's, as, her, as her principal said, she's a, large, she's a large part of the reason why students and parents love the faculty and the environment at Atlanta Road Elementary. So thank you very much. <laughs> Denise Stevens. There she is. She's back there. Denise is a 24-year 24 24-year 24 art teacher and current Cumberland, Cumberland Road Teacher of the Year. She makes uh, she makes sure the, the wonderful work of our students are portrayed throughout the hallways of the school. So thank you very much. <laughs> Sandy Van Weinsberg, where's Sandy? There she is. Sandy is the Fall Creek Elementary 2004 Teacher of the Year. Uh, she's a teacher leadership academy graduate. She's also helped write and receive grants uh, to help with our students. And she's helped coordinate the annual book fair and co-chair the Young Authors Program. So again, thank you very much, Sandy. <laughs> Judy Varner, she's in her 22nd year in education. She's also a licensed mental health counselor. Uh, and she's helped start several programs for, for children who are in need, so thank you very much for that. The, uh, she's also serves as a mentor for many of the new counselors in, in the school corporation. So thank you very much, Judy. <laughs> and actually, I do want to read one thing that, her, that the principal wrote about her, because I think this is neat. Uh, the, uh, she, the principal described her as a person filled with integrity, sincerity, compassion, and understanding. So I think that's a tremendous compliment. Ann Vollmer. She's a 25-year teacher, and she's, the, and she's the lead teacher regarding the technology and spell bowl at New Britain. She currently serves on the School Improvement Committee, which is in charge of setting goals for the school and creating a staff development plan to meet those goals. Thank you very much, Ann. And this guy didn't know that this was coming, because he probably, he probably wouldn't have been here if he'd known it. Now. Mike is a guy that gets no credit. I'm very serious. There's a lot of people like myself who get credit for a lot of things, but in reality, a guy behind the scenes that helps educate all of us, and I literally mean educate. He's a CPA. He, he, could, be doing, he could be working at a big firm downtown making a lot more money, just like a lot of the public servants, but he, he's not doing that. He's here helping our school corporation. And not only that, he's also on the Falkner Township Advisory Board. He also helps the town, the county, the city of Noblesville, Delaware Township, help financially plan so that because he, he does a tremendous job. And the one thing to his credit, that the, the state, there's sometimes he calls down to the state to get information they don't necessarily like when he calls because he literally has caught them in mistakes, not once, twice, but about three or four times. And these are multi-million dollar states to our benefit and to the state's detriment. And so. Mike, thank you very much for all you do. <laughs> Town employees. Gary. Gary is a 15-year veteran of the Fisher's Police Department. Uh, he's also a veteran of the Iraq War. He was deployed to Iraq in December 2004 and returned in November 2005, having served in Balad as well as Baghdad. So thank you very much, Gary. Brandon Chevalette. Uh, in addition to being a lieutenant for the Fisher's Fire Department, Brandon is an active member, member of the United States Navy. Uh, he has been deployed to the, the Iraq the Kuwait theater and is scheduled to leave in literally three days, uh, Saturday, February 24th, and he, he'll be, he will be serving as a medic. So thank you, Brandon, and, and please be safe. Your prayer, our prayers will be with you. And your family. Joe Cole, he's been a town employee since 1995. 
He began as a laboratory technician and was promoted as, as to our laboratory manager at the wastewater treatment plant. And in 2006, our, our lab received the Indiana Water Environment Association's Laboratory Excellence Award. So congratulations, Joe. This is the one elected official I, I kind of intentionally left out, and this is Gay Cordell, our clerk treasurer. Uh, Gay just celebrated her 25th year uh, as the Fisher's uh, clerk treasurer, and I think that's a tremendous accomplishment of itself. For the past 18 years, consecutive years, uh, she has earned the financial reporting achievement for her report for, her report for the town's uh, comprehensive annual financial report. So, Gay, you're committed to Fisher's. There's no doubt about that, and thank you very much for all your work. Thank you. Mark Fazel, where's Mark? She's over here somewhere. There he is. Uh, he's the immediate past president of the Indiana Association of Building, Associ uh, Building Officials. Uh, he's one of those guys that drives around in those green trucks that inspects buildings after building to make sure they comply with all the safety codes, to make sure that it's a safe building to, and, and a proper building. So thank you very much, Mark. <laughs> Steve Fisher. Prior to coming to, to Fisher, Steve served in the Army for over 20 years. And, he, and for a little while, for about a year, he served as the Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce uh, and helped get this organization started as well. And he's helping build the town's uh, information systems and maintain those as well. So thank you very much, Steve. Ed Gebhardt. Uh, Ed helped found the, the first Fisher's Citizens Police Academy in the spring of 2001. And he was, with that success, he moved on to create uh, the Fisher's Police the Teen Academy in partnering with the YMCA. And that was started in 2004. So thank you very much, Ed. <laughs> this is another person who didn't know he's going to be recognized today. Where's Jason? There he is. Jason Greenlee. He's been employed with the town since 1999. Uh, he's one of those guys that last week spent 12-hour shifts snowing, or plying our streets, make sure the snow was removed. And, and not just giving a, a, a kudos to Jason, but to all of our public work staff, as well as all the contractors that we hired. They, I think they did a fantastic job of getting our streets cleared and, and, and making sure that uh, our schools get back open as quickly as we could and get our businesses going as well. So thank you very much, Jason, and all the public work staff. Kyle Marks. Actually, I was wrong. When I said, when I, when I said there was only three people in the room who were lifelong Fisher's residents, I, I just remembered this is the fourth. Uh, Kyle's a lifelong Fisher's resident as well, and I forgot that. Uh, he's been an employee with, for the town for 21 years, and he's is about as unpretentious and unassuming as, as you can imagine, uh, and which I think is a tremendous compliment. And he makes sure that our buildings are open every day and they're safe to get into. So thank you very much, Kyle. Randy McFarland. Uh, over the past four years, Sergeant McFarland has been developing an outreach program to help troubled students in the Hamilton Southeastern Schools. And it's called the Catch and Release Program. And <laughs> that, isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't double entendre wonderful? But this is actually, a, it's a fishing opportunity. He finds people who, who thinks that, who, who can see a positive role model, and let's go fishing. And he takes kids who need some help, and he takes them fishing. And he initially did it out of his own pocket. He, a lot of these folks, a lot of these kids don't have fishing poles. They don't have bait. They don't have tackle. And he did it all himself. And, and now with a little bit of help, some of that's subsidized through grants and, and other means. So thank you very much for starting a great program. <laughs> Todd Muth. Where's Todd? There he is. Lieutenant, he's, he's the... 2006 Fisher's Fire Department Roy G. Holland Officer of the Year, which is the highest honor that the Fire, de fire Department bestows upon its, its, uh, any of its members. And that's quite an honor. Roy Holland was, in my opinion, the best Fisher Town Council member we've ever had. Right neck and neck with Walt. I can't, since Walt's here, I have to say that, too. <laughs> and uh, uh, Todd's also part of the Dive Tactical Rescue Team. 
and the, and the public safety scuba instructor. Uh, but he's also been ser served a special role this past year. He's the fire department's liaison to Dwayne Reddick, and that Dwayne's another person you're going to meet kind of in a second. Uh, Dwayne's currently stationed in Iraq. And, and a special thing that Todd and, and members of the fire department have done this past year since, since Dwayne's been in Iraq serving our country is that he helps organize all the firefighters that if things are fixed or need help around Dwayne, uh, Dwayne's house, they will help fix it. And if Mrs. Reddick needs anything, they, they help out whenever she asks. So Todd, thank you very much for leading that effort and, and all the firefighters are doing that. Dwayne Reddick. Now, it's kind of hard if you're in Iraq to be here today. And so his wife's here, Michelle. Where's Michelle? There she is. As well as his parents, Bill and Karen. Where's, where are they? There they are. Now, Dwayne's in the United States Marine Corps, and, and he transports trucks. He, works, he helps transporting trucks. And uh, I think that uh, with everything that's going on over there, I think these folks deserve a special applause for everything that they've done to help uh, make our country a great place, as well as uh, their country, their, their, their son and their husband serve our country and our, and our community. So thank you very much, folks. Denessa Stoles, I just wish I had half the energy she had. Um, her enthusiasm for Richie Woods is, is uh, unmatched and unbelievable. Uh, she's leading the way to develop a long-term plan for Richie Woods, uh, and, uh, and, and I, we appreciate all of her hard work. She's back there. Thank you very much, Denessa. <laughs> Sean Underhill. Where's Sean? There he is. Uh, Sean is, uh, as well as being at the, at the, at the uh, uh, fire department, is, uh, is an operations sergeant for the United States Army 151st Long Range Surveillance Infantry Detachment. Uh, Sean successfully returned from mission last year from Afghanistan. So, welcome back. Glad you made it home safely, and thank you very much for your service. And then our 33rd, uh, this, is, this is another surprise, uh, one of those lifelong Fishers residents that, that a, a, a picture is worth a thousand words, <laughs> but there's, there's something, a couple, I'm going to say a couple things about George real quick. And George is the longest tenured employee of the town of Fishers. Okay, and he was the first full-time police officer we hired. He's our police chief. He's been our police chief since we ever had a police chief. Uh, and there's a reason for that. I didn't hire George. Walt, did you hire George? He's enduring. He's he's went. The, George has survived three town managers. And so this is a guy that knows his job very well. He, didn't, he, he just didn't get it because he's been here forever. And I'm very serious. George is a, is a tremendous fire, fire chief, police chief. And, and that's been recognized. The governor found out we're going to do this today, and, and he, he won up this, and he said, you know, I'm not going to give you a blue plaque. I'm going to give you a Sagamore of the Wabash, and that's what the governor did last week for George. So, so please thank George for all of his years of service. Just in case you're wondering, June 15th, 1978, that's when he started, almost 30 years. So, you're actually out of here on time. I was wondering myself, but <laughs> as you can tell, 
I think that the 24 people we recognized last year uh, were, were wonderful individuals who represented all the volunteers in our community. I think the 33 individuals we recognize today as public servants are also wonderful individuals. And these folks last year, this year, are truly representative of all the individuals who work every single day to make Fishers a great place to live. And that's why the state of the town is, is what it is. It's excellent. And thank you very much for your time and attention today. And be, be careful going home. Thank you.